There's fucking Pezzo. He doesn't want to be on video. I'll be on video. Hey, fuck you. Okay, so I'm at Power of the Hour, and Donnie is removing his stock radiator support for weight savings, and he's replacing it with a UPR unit, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh that garbage right there and see what the weight savings is off the front end. He's already got it off because he doesn't waste time, and this guy's basically going to go up in there somehow, something like this. So, Donnie, you mind uh, grabbing that? So it's gonna go something like that. Gotta move this guy in. And okay, so there you go. That's how it's pretty much gonna go, and that's what's gonna be supporting your radiator going forward. So let's weigh what you know the difference is, and see how much weight savings he's knocking off the front. Uh, mind you, he does not have the front sway bar. So how much does a front sway bar weigh? It's probably I'm gonna say eight pounds or so. Eight pounds. So let's add eight pounds to this. So let's weigh real quick. Okay, let's weigh this pig. We're in the warehouse. Where the fuck's the scale? That's a scale? Yeah. Oh, damn. It's got to zero it out. Yeah, so that's zero. Okay, let's weigh the, the, old, the old shit. UPR says it's about 26, 27 pounds. I don't know if they're including the sway bar or not. Okay, so yeah, they're probably including the sway bar. So 23 pounds versus... <laughs> Is it zeroed out? Make sure it's zeroed out, zeroed out. Cool. It's probably one and a half. Oh no, it's four pounds. Okay, so you're saving 19 pounds off the front end just by installing this radiator support right now. Um, if you add another eight, so you're saving 26 or so pounds? Or yeah, 26, 26 or so pounds. pounds. All right, so there we go. So if you wanted to save some weight off the front of the car, first thing we're installing today is the UPR radiator support. Okay, so we're getting right to it. So the uh, lower part of the radiator has this little nipple where it falls into, and you can see it falls right into the factory studs. I'll grab one on this side. Can I get on it? Yeah, I can. Yeah. All right. You have another one? Another. Fucking pussy. Great, give me the hard one. All right, so this basically is gonna, you know, save at least 25 pounds off the front end. And it's all in an effort to get this car to go as low into the nines as possible. So instead of just adding more power, we're gonna lighten it up and lighten it up. We're also gonna install a double adjustable upper control arm in the rear here, just to be able to play with the pinion angle and all that stuff. What do you got going on there right now? Uh, I don't know, just something I have laying around. What the fuck is that shit? I think it's something. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I never noticed what the fuck that yeah, was. It's for this year car. Oh man. Okay, so we're gonna get something beefier in there and, and we'll show you the uh, difference. The one that's going on the car is over there on my toolbox. Oh, okay, let's go check it. So we're gonna replace what you just saw, which is some fucking hacked up shit. Oh, by the way. Yes, he finally put a drag set on it. Where is it at? Okay, here we go. So this is what he's going to replace it with, similar to what I have installed on my car. Real beefy UPR stuff. I have one on my car. Not noisy. Freaking mint. Uh, heavy duty. So I'm going to go ahead and replace what he's got going on now with this guy. Okay, now my, we're going to go to my car. What are we going to do to my car? We're going to replace this guy with a VMP ice tank. Yes, a front-mounted ice tank just to make it super convenient to put... Uh, ice into it and then actually cool down the intercooler. No, we don't put ice on top of this. You put ice on top of this, I'm gonna slap you in the face. We get an ice tank to cool the water, to cool the, uh, the, the air charge via the intercooler. And here he is right here. Okay, so here's the ice tank. We have these at VMP. Okay, basically, this is gonna take the place of what's going on there. And I'm just gonna run water through it. Makes it super convenient and easy to get ice in and out of there. Come on, baby. Oh, I should have set this up better, but basically you get the idea. And the drain is strategically set up so it doesn't totally drain the tank. It drains enough so that you still have plenty of water in there. So then you stuff it with about, I don't know, 10 pounds of ice. 
and you basically have a miniature ice tank in there using the stock intercooler pump that comes with a VMP kit or a Roush supercharged vehicle. So let's get the old one out and the new one in. Oh yeah, we're about to make some noise up in here. Okay, so you got to take this bitch off when you do the ice tank because you're going to need all that room. So basically you just yank on this sucker and it pops right out. This is the stock snorkel that goes for the stock cold air. But since I got the donkey dick, I don't need this shit. So see you later. All right, so now you're going to want to pinch the lines. I already pinched that line with a little set of pinchers here. I'm going to pinch this line. It pinched. And now undo these uh, little locking deals here, whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> and I'm getting them out of there. Let's see how we do it. Boy, Donnie's got some fucking nice tools. My goodness. No craftsman junk in his box. It's nice shit. Snap-on shit. He probably paid for the snap-on man's fucking child's college with this stuff. This is probably 500 bucks. I don't doubt it. Undo these bolts. These guys are so hardcore. Listen to the fucking music that they got in the shop. Hardcore fucking hot rod shop. Is it the Google Dolls? Is that the name of the band? Goofu Dolls? <laughs> I always listen to the Google Dolls when I want to make horsepower. Fucking gay motherfuckers. Alrighty. Now we got a whole bunch of room. Pinchers doing what it should do. And I gotta see how we can situate this whole deal. Let's see how it you know, see how it kind of all fits together in there. I've never done this before. I've seen them do it, but I wanted to kind of tackle it myself just to see what we're up against and how much of a pain in the butt install it is for someone who's never done it and has some kind of mechanical knowledge. Okay, when you get your ice tank, you're going to notice how it has a tab down here. Okay, well, how does that go? This goes this way. See that tab? See that bolt down there? And I'll try to point at it with the flashlight here. This bolt right here that guy so that bolt right there you loosen it a little bit and you slide this guy in like so Oop. and you know theoretically once you make some room for it da -da 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 -da. where are you I'm looking like an idiot right now oh, all these harnesses are in the way this is part of the video process Donnie so basically it's gonna slide down in there when you take when you remove the tent off and this tab should line up with this guy right here okay I just realized this guy has to come off also and you have to replace it with a bolt that does not have a stud attached to it the people okay go ahead Don. <laughs> all right so this is the stud that comes out this is for the cold air snorkel snorkel you want to replace it with a bolt but make sure the bolt isn't longer than the bolt you're taking out because if it is you're gonna put a hole in your radiator really yes It'll go through here and it goes right into the plastic end tank and now you got a fucking coolant leak. Oh, I see. So make sure the bolt you use is the same length or just a hair shorter than the one you take out. And just like that, Donnie got me a cap. Boop. Let's put the sucker in. Should be good to go. Hose, uh, the bolt is slightly removed. Replace the stud with a bolt. Let's see if it fits in there snug. Dang, that, that wasn't bad at all. So. Went ahead and as you can tell, way down there, everything is where it should be. Let me see if I can, all right? It's in the slot, B's in the trap, snug it down, looking good. Okay, she's in. I just have to tighten that bolt down there. I already tightened this bolt. I put in the, the ball valve. Um, this, don't worry, it's not hitting anything. This doesn't spin. That's just a little shield. And it opens and closes really easy. And that's the main thing you want to be able to get to it easy you know drain it boom boom i use the ball valve i prefer a ball valve so it's quarter inch to a quarter inch ball valve to a quarter inch to barb so i can put a hose at the end of it and run a hose all the way to the bottom so i don't have to splash it all over the place and potentially have water on my front accessories while i'm driving up to the line so let me uh, button this guy up put this cap on this end now this is a one of the first units so yours will not have this yours will just have this end but I gotta cap this guy off mm. uh, uh, uh. Skirt. okay <laughs> so 
Let me get the flashlight over here real quick and show you guys what the deal be. All right, so. Okay, so what I did is, or what Donnie suggested and what Donnie and I kind of talked about is rerouting the lines. Now, you could do this if you want, if you don't, it all depends on how you think it should be run, but this is the way I think it should be run. Coming out of the pump, okay? Coming out of the pump, this is in, so this is drawing from the tank. Ooh, it's close. I gotta make sure that that bitch don't rub, but should be okay. Coming out of the tank, and then this hose goes to the top of the intercooler, meaning I want the ice water coming directly from the tank, coming out of the pump into the intercooler, and then the return water from the intercooler going into this line, which is the heat exchanger, and it goes into the return, okay? So basically, I want the coldest amount of water going in there first. The, uh, the way it has it set up uh, stock is basically it goes from the tank to the, through the heat exchanger, then the intercooler, which makes sense if the water is like, you know, regular antifreeze or whatever, you want to cool it before it gets to the intercooler. But if you have ice water in the tank already, you want it in the motor as soon as possible, in my opinion, just like um, industrial uh, chilled water system. So again, from the tank, this guy goes all the way up to the intercooler and then it returns via the heat exchanger. So if anything, the heat exchanger is cooling the return water, for lack of a better word. So yeah, man, I'll show you the finished product and we'll button this guy up. Still shit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, so on the drain, notice how I put a barb in that bit, okay? And I was gonna put a hose in that bit. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so put a hose coming off of the drizzle, the shizzle, so it drains away from all the shiz, and we're good. So let's look at the top, see the finished product, and get some ice in it. See the pump do its thing, and uh, get the fuck out of here. Real quick, I want to show you guys. Donnie went ahead and Put his race wheels back on because we're going racing tomorrow. That's what we're doing all this shit. We're going racing tomorrow. Hopefully the weather holds out here in West Palm Beach. So Donnie's out here with his junk ass setup. Piece of shit. Junk fuck. Gonna get his ass drove by a stick car. What you think about that? Yeah, no? All right. And uh, same thing. My goal with this car is to get it into the nines in stick form. First time I'll be at the track with E85. Um, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? We'll see. I'll report back. Make sure uh, I document everything. But once this bitch goes nines, I'm done, bro. Selling everything, moving on to the next. Okay, so this is what it looks like up here. Heat exchanger return, because this is going from the heat exchanger. Boop. From the pump to the top of the intercooler, getting the fresh cool water from the tank. This guy returns back to the heat exchanger, makes its way through the heat exchanger, back in this bitch. So again, from the pump to the intercooler, out of the intercooler, to the heat exchanger. Back through this bit. Okay, so after the ice tank was installed, I go went ahead and went on the road and just flogged the crap out of the car. And I wanted to get the blower temperatures really high. So I was successful in doing that by getting them up to 140. Is that backwards? Hmm, I wonder if this camera's recording backwards. Let me try the front facing camera. Son of a bitch. Okay, so Air charge temp is 131. Again, hood's down. Car's been idling for a little bit. IAT2. Blower temps are 140. Short-term fuel trims. They're pretty damn tight on the donkey dick PMAS. So, what I'm going to do is put ice in it. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Open the tank up. See, it's going to be frothing away. Alright, so now I'm going to drain some of it. Okay, remember that little valve we had? Okay, so this valve, I'm gonna open it up to drain it to about, no, a quarter, maybe a little more. Drain time. Whoop. Remember that little line I put underneath? Yes, sir. It's pissing out to the side a little bit. Get it down to the right level. Put some ice in it. So if you're at the track and you make a pull, make a run or whatever, this is what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna go up, drain till there. Okay, that's a predetermined drain level stuff it with ice we're going to key on let it circulate through the intercooler and you'll see how much the temperature drops 
Okay, there it is. So, it's drained right up to the port. Let me shake it. See, it's still got water in it right up to the port. Shut the valve. And go over to the cooler. Because I went to the track today, did not have a great time because the fucking throttle body started shutting on me. So, swapping that out. Very nice. And let's stuff it with ice. Yes, this is a little sand thing. So when you take your kids to the beach, this is what they make sand castles with. Let me do this with the, with the camera off. So, it's full. So this is what I suggest you guys do. Do not just go ahead and run it like this. In my opinion, let's cool down the intercooler. Let's cool down everything by just keying on. And we'll see what she says when we circulate it. Look at that. Look at her go. So what I want, I want the intercooler to, to get cooled down because it's, it was 140 when we left it parked sitting there. I want to run it through. IET2 is 169. My goodness. Let's turn this bitch on. Remember, it just sat there heat soaking. down pretty quickly all right it'll take a little while because it has to go through the sensor it has to cool a lot of things we're already down 20 degrees from where it was it was 140 earlier so this is what I suggest you do you run it for a little bit and you cool everything down then you go back and you drain a little bit out and restuff it with ice okay now that we have gone okay so it melted a little bit of it water still cold let's drain some now, this isn't something you have to do. I just think this is an added benefit, just another option to have an ice tank when you want to go to the track and make sure you have nice, cold downstreams via the intercooler. This guy not only is bigger capacity than the stock that comes from Roush or VMP, it uh, has the ability to stuff ice in it. So I'm going to drain some out of it. Yes, sir. Restuff it, and we'll see if we can get it down to about 110. And then you don't have to put, you know, a fan on it and all this crap. Even though it is kind of inconvenient to have a big old ice deal, it's just another option. All right, that's yeah, pretty good right there. Let's restuff it now. Okay, restuffed after cooling it down 20 degrees. Actually, it was more like 50 after I turned everything off. Tighten it down. Key on. Actually, turn the car on. Let it do its thing. Do do do. Ba -ba 118. This bitch on. She starts so pretty. Once the engage decides to read again, <laughs> it's sort of stuck here. I reset the sucker, see if that's the problem. Oh, look, I have my logo on an engage. <gasps> How did he do that? Yolo, can I do that? Hey, Yolo, can I do that? Nope, you can't. How do we get it to do that? Be YOLO. There you go. So we restuffed it. So now it'll maintain this temperature for most of the run. Like I sat there idling at the track for a real long time and that sucker didn't really go up over 120. Today was 93 degrees. Uh, as you can see, the air charge temp went down, but also the uh, IAT2 went down at the same time. So if you want to go ahead and make sure you have a, another option to keeping your blower temperatures cold, you could even do this on a dyno pull instead of putting the stupid uh, ice on top of the blower. You can just stuff it with ice, do a dyno pull, and you can party. Actually, I wonder if air charge temp is actually blower temps on this guy. I got to double check that, but I'm not sure if that's math temperature or if that's... Uh, lower temperature and math temperature or it's kind of doing both a little bit of both but you can see there was a 20 degree drop with an ice tank so another added option pick it up from vmp if not you can get a rear tank mounted version from tig vision or something like that but an ice tank is a great option to keeping the blower nice and chilly at the track or in dyno pools or just having the added capacity to keep everything cool so there you go guys i'm tired i did a lot of work uh cut I don't like working on cars anymore, but I wanted to show you this little item. And if you, whether you put a VMP version on or a TIG Vision rear mounted ice tank, it's an added benefit. And uh, for blower cars, I think it's a necessity, especially if you're going racing consistently. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later.